Okay, so in the last video, we got the data into a format that looks like this. You do need the data in a format that looks somewhat similar to this uh, with the years on the left, school name, and, and so on. Now we're gonna try a new um, data visualization program. Unfortunately, Google Sheets used to have something like this, uh, but they don't. This one's actually quite a bit fancier and it's also free, so we're gonna use this here to make a Hans Rosling type video. Um, what you need to do is just click on create chart. You'll have to log in. Uh, I'm completely fine if you don't trust something like this to just create a Google account. You can create a Google account in one minute. Uh, just create a new one that's kind of a dummy account that doesn't have any of your contact. I think this site is probably okay. I'm trusting it, uh, but please uh, feel free to just create an own dummy Gmail account so you can log in and have access to this uh, chart program. Uh, once you're in, you want to go to create chart. Um, I'm going to just give it a name really quick, um, schools. And then you'll go down to this XY scatter bubble motion. There's lots of different options of pretty, pretty jazzy charts you can do in this program. Uh, I'm going to use Motion Regular. Motion Grouped is actually what Hans Rosling uses. Uh, if you th remember his video, he has groups of countries from the same continent that could be the same color. In this case, it's a smaller scale uh, video. I just have three schools, and each one can be a, a separate color. I could do, for example, county schools and city schools as separate, separate colors, but uh, that's a little more advanced than we need to do here. So when you open it, there will be this default chart here. You're going to end up erasing this. This just gives you an idea of how it works. Uh, you can see the years are down here. And as you scan across the years, you can see how the, the different changes that occur in the chart. What you need to do is go to data. And this is all the data that's driving this chart right here. If you scan down to the bottom, there's a thing that says clear data grid, clear. So you'll go ahead and get rid of all that. We want to import our own data, uh, and that's this import button. Here is all the data. Again, we want to clear this data out. Now go ahead back to your spreadsheet, just this section. Uh, don't, don't highlight this uh, original data that you pulled in. Use the, the data that you've already cleaned up here. You're going to cut that to your clipboard, Control-C, and go back to this place where it says import the flat data and you're going to paste it right there control v uh, on a pc uh, sorry i had to check the mac command real quick that would be command v for the mac to paste the data uh, it won't look in quite the right format it looks like it's kind of messed up that's that's fine it's it's probably okay let's click on next um oh one thing you do need to make sure that your data has headers and the answer there should be yes. So it'll read this first row in as the headers, the variables. Next, so your category, you want to be the year. Uh, your Z, this is going to control, it's the variable that'll control the size of your bubble. For this assignment, let's go ahead and make that the total students. That way, the bigger the school is, the bigger the bubble will appear on the chart. Uh, your label, will be your school name or whatever you called the variable for the name of your school. And then the X, so this will be the variable that appears along the bottom of your, your chart. The Y would be the variable that appears along the side of your chart. Um, I think I'm going to look at poverty rate along the bottom, uh, number of Asian students there along the, I, you know what, I think I'm going to get grab pupil teacher instead. So you can play around with different ones. If, if you choose one and you decide you don't like it, you can always just go back to this, um, this part of the, the chart process and recreate it. It's not, not much problem. Then you go next, once you have your variables chosen, uh, just leave everything alone on this. This would be if you wanted to screen out specific things, if you had a huge data set, uh, we don't need to worry about that here, so we'll click next, next again. Uh, we do want the the category as our year, and we want that to be ASC. ASC stands for ascending. We want to start with the um, year that was most long ago, 
and then go up to the most recent year. So we want ASC there. I don't think this really matters too much. And then done. And we should see a nice graph there. Notice as we click around on these different years, we can see how things have changed. Uh, and if we, it's going to automatically go. If we pause it at any point, uh, take a real quick look at what's going on here. So this is the number of Asian students. So in 2011, for example, Stone Spring Elementary had 13 Asian students. Now what I don't like here is the pupil teacher ratio is 12.3, 12.3 students for every one teacher. Um, it automatically read that in as a percent and that is that is not a percent. That should just be a, a raw number. Uh, and notice that the title of the graph is, is still not, not correct. So we do need to go in and make some adjustments. So how do we do that? First, let's take a, a look at the title there. So you need to think of an appropriate title. Uh, I'm going to say, um, Harrisonburg Rockingham Elementaries. 2011 to 2015. You can title yours whatever makes sense based on what you have. And then that subtitle, so the thing that appears right here, our circle size does not show the state population. It shows the population of each school there. So I'm just going to edit that. School population. And what else? So we had the, the percents down here. This one I had to click around a bit, do a little bit of Googling to find. Let's see if I can find it now. Um, data labels. Let me find it real quick and then I'll... Okay, it's an axis, which makes sense. Uh, this is the x-axis or horizontal axis. This is the y-axis or vertical axis. Uh, I'm going to go down to here where it says left axis label format. Notice that that just has the value. Uh, the bottom axis label format has a percent sign after it. All I need to do there is delete that and it updates right away exactly like what I want. Uh, if you want a little more fancy options there, click on the question mark and it'll, it'll tell you some of the other types of formats that you can have your, your numbers in if you prefer. Let me pause that again. So notice here that of the three schools, Waterman Elementary, in, in, at least in 2015, the most recent year, Waterman Elementary is the largest, has the most students. Um, the pupil teacher ratio there uh, is the lowest, meaning there's the fewest pupils per teacher, which is typically a positive thing in, in education. Uh, it also has the fewest number of Asian students there. So there would be only eight if we highlight it there, we can see that eight Asians. So in 2015, there were only eight Asian students attending Waterman Elementary. And we can see similar things here. We can also see things that change over time. So for example, notice how Mountain View went chum, chum, chum. I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, watch Mountain View go right to left. What does that mean? Uh, gets back a little bit there. But it means during the years 2011 to 2014, for whatever reason, the pupil-teacher ratio was really decreasing at Mountain View Elementary. It could be that they were losing students and kept the same number of teachers. Uh, it could be that they were hiring in some new teachers, perhaps special ed teachers. Uh, but there's always a story behind the data, and that's one thing I want you to take away from this. So now you have your, your graph. You can play with it, uh, get it to how you like it. There's some options to change colors if, if you want to do that. Uh, if you want to go back, import the data again and, and set it up differently, different um, variables. I, I might change that. Uh, Asian's not very descriptive and neither is pupil teacher. So, um, so now I'm looking for the labels for those. Okay, I had to play around a little bit. It looks like the way to change these is to go into your data tab here and just click directly into 
into the, where the data is. So I'm going to call that the pupil teacher ratio, and that should change there. And this I'm going to say number of Asian students. And that should update. I have the circle size showing the population. The circles are labeled with the school. So I think that right there is a, a well-labeled graph that um, could be read. Next thing I need to do then is publish it. So if I go up to publication or down to publish, save it and press publish in the central column. So I'm going to save it first. Now I'm going to press publish. Okay. And now if I go down to publication and click it, um, if, if I had some kind of web page, I could put my chart there with this HTML. Uh, what I just want is this URL. So this is just a, a web address. Then go back to your spreadsheet. Of course, you need to share this with me. This is the most important part. Uh, put it anywhere on your spreadsheet. Maybe just make sure it's clear that I can see it somewhere. And then if we click on this link, should be able to see the chart. Notice that it's even interactive. So you now have a, a chart that you've created with some schools that are hopefully relevant to you, and you could share this address with people. If you needed to edit that, um, you'd log back into this chart CA site. Uh, you could edit the graph, paste the data back in, uh, and I'm not sure if it would, I, I'm not sure when you publish again if it would give you a new web link or not. That's something you'd have to play around with. But congratulations, uh, once you've made it through this, this is a uh, a pretty substantial achievement in terms of spreadsheets and data visualization.